Well, good evening, folks. Once again, it's raining, and I'm out here all wild-haired. <laughs> I feel like, what's that, oh, what's that character from Seinfeld? But uh, anyway, um, we're going to jump right in on it tonight. Um, hope you're doing well. We love you in Jesus' name, and, and just take a breath from all the foolishness that's going on in the world, and remember that there's a God in heaven who loves you, and he has a lot of people that love you, too. It doesn't matter what your color, what your political stripe, uh, what your income level is, what your point of origin is. I'm more concerned, and I believe God's more concerned about your destination uh, than uh, any of that stuff. Tonight's installment's called Family Vacations. When our son Spencer was six weeks old, I said to my wife, it's time for a vacation. Not a good idea, she cautioned, but she went along because she believes in letting me learn from my mistakes. We went to a lodge four hours away. Spencer slept the whole way there. I was gloating. Checked in, went to our room. I was gloating some more. Having kids is a breeze. Mothers are such alarmists. Then Spencer woke up. In the book of Revelation, John writes about the seven plagues of divine wrath, ranging from bodily sores to earthquakes. John missed a plague, crying kids. Spencer stopped crying long enough for us to eat dinner. Grandmother types looked at us and smiled. Before I had a child, I thought they smiled because they liked children. I now understand that they smile because their children are grown. We went back to our room and went to bed. Spencer cried all night. The next morning at breakfast, we tried to slip out of the restaurant without him. But the manager blocked our escape. Mary and Joseph once left Jesus behind when they were on an out-of-town trip, too. Kind of makes you wonder, doesn't it? What happened on the way home can only be attributed to sleep deprivation. In, a, in an effort to salvage our first family vacation, I drove home on a designated scenic route. The state calls them scenic routes because it can't squeeze twisty road that adds three hours to your trip and makes your kid car sick route on one sign. The next year at vacation time, having forgotten our previous vacation, we drove to a lodge eight hours away. Spencer didn't cry once. He slept, he slept soundlessly every night. He rode in his car seat without complaint. We didn't hear a peep from him. But then earplugs have that effect. That family vacations don't turn out as we'd hoped can only be blamed on television and its inaccurate portrayal of family life. I remember a Brady Bunch episode when the Bradys traveled for an entire week without once having to stop to use the bathroom. Florence Henderson sang across three states without anyone pushing her out the car door. When I was growing up, we wouldn't be out the driveway before my brother Glenn had slugged me for breathing on him. We do ourselves a disfavor when we expect family life to be the Brady Bunch revisited. Truth is, most of our families lurch from one mess to another, and that's not altogether a bad thing. Otherwise, how would we cultivate the fine art of forgiveness? My wife even forgave me after our first vacation. She said at the time, you can't help it. You come from a long line of men who don't listen to their wives. I said, excuse me, what did you say? We're saving up for our next vacation. We're thinking about the mountains. There are all kinds of places to lose a kid there, I told my wife. But she knows I'm just kidding. Actually, I thank God every day for my children. Every day. Just some days more than others. <laughs> uh, may the Lord bless you. May you have a good time and if you haven't taken that vacation yet this year get it in time's getting short enjoy your family we love you